Okay, so here we have a ball um, dropped from a height of 25 meters. It hits the ground. Uh, the time of contact between the ball and the ground is 1.5 milliseconds, which we want to convert to seconds, 0 0.0015 seconds. Um, and then the ball rebounds to a height of 10 meters. Um, and from this information, we're asked to determine the net force exerted on the ball while in contact with the ground. So if we look at the ball when it's touching the ground, so here's the ground. There are two forces acting on the ball. Uh, gravity, the force of gravity is down, and normal force is up. So we sum the forces and we get normal force minus mg equal to ma. Now, the first question is asking for the net force. So there's, there's two possible ways to find net force, but in this problem uh, only one way will work. Uh, normal force minus mg, that is the net force, but it's also equal to ma. So for this problem here, we're going to be finding the net force by simply calculating ma. Uh, we're not going to be able to find it this way because there's, there's not enough information to determine the normal force um, without first finding ma. So we're going we're gonna to be solving this problem. Net force equals ma. So our challenge, we already have the mass. The mass is 200 grams, which we want to put in kilograms. 200 grams is 0.2 kilograms. Uh, our challenge is to find the acceleration. Uh, and by acceleration, we mean the acceleration of the ball well in contact with the ground uh, during this 0 0.0015 second time interval. Um, a common misunderstanding is that kids will say, oh, this acceleration is 9.8. But that's the acceleration during the free fall part as the ball accelerates down and as the ball accelerates up. Um, we, we know that that acceleration is gravity, which is negative 9.8. But this acceleration here is the acceleration well in contact with the ground. Um, and that acceleration is an upward acceleration. It's going to be an upward acceleration because, you know, the ball comes in traveling down. When it hits the ground, it has a, a downward velocity. And then a fraction of a second later, it has an upward velocity. So the change in the velocity is uh, upward. From a downward velocity to an upward velocity, uh, the change is up. So therefore, the acceleration is up. So finding this acceleration, which will allow us to get the net force, it's going to be uh, just kinematics. So the first thing we got to do is we got to find uh, the velocity right when the ball hits, and that's going to be a negative velocity because down is negative and up is positive. So finding this velocity here, it's going to be a kinematic. So I'll put it here. Vf squared equals V initial squared plus 2ax. Uh, the starting velocity at the beginning of the fall is zero. So V final, when the ball hits, is square root of 2ax, 2 times negative 9.8. And then this 25 meters is negative, because the ball is falling down. So negative 25 meters. And this gives us a velocity uh, when the ball hits the ground of negative 22.136. So remember, square roots are always plus or minus, and here we choose the minus because the ball is traveling down. 
So 22.136 is that velocity. And then we do the same thing to find the velocity right after the ball leaves the ground. So we, we now need to find this velocity here. So kinematic again, uh, same exact equation. Vf squared equals V initial squared plus 2ax. Now up here, when the ball reaches the highest point, the velocity is zero. We learned that back in chapter two. So we can set V final to zero. And V initial is going to be the square root of negative 2ax. Gravity is the acceleration. As the ball rises, the ball goes up, 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 up. The acceleration is negative 9.8. And then x is 10 meters. So that velocity is 14. So we have so we have the velocity right before the ball hits the ground. We have the velocity right after the ball leaves the ground. And we have the time of contact between the ball and the ground, which is the time it took for the velocity to change. So now we can calculate the acceleration. So Vf equals V initial plus At. So A is V final minus V initial over T. So V final is 14. Uh, v initial was negative 22.136. Now here is probably one of the tricky parts in the problem. We have minus a minus, which is a, which is a plus. Our time of contact is 0 0.0015 seconds. And this gives an acceleration of 24,090 meter per second squared. So that's a really large acceleration. And the reason for that is because our time of contact is so small. The velocity changes in a, you know, in a millisecond. So now that we have the acceleration, we can solve for the net force. So net force equals ma. The mass of the ball is 0.2. Acceleration we determined to be 24,090. So this gives a net force of 4,818. And that is the answer to the first question. So for the second question, we are asked to find the force that the ground exerts on the ball while the ball is in contact with the ground. And basically what they're asking for here is the normal force. The force of the ground on the ball is Fn. Uh, so what we have, you know, we, in the first part, we set up our free body diagram, normal force up, mg down, um, up is plus, down is minus, there's our sign convention. So when we sum the forces, we have normal force minus mg equal to ma, and we could, and by the way, we, we know what ma is. ma is the net force, which is what we solved for in the first part, and that answer was 4,818 newtons. Um, so now, to find the normal force, we just take this equation. Normal force is going to be ma plus mg. So the ma is 4,818. And then we add uh, plus mg. So the mass is 0.2. Gravity is 9.8, and this gives us a normal force of 4,000, I'm just going to round this off to uh, 820, I think it's actually 819.6, 
but we'll just round that. So very similar, this answer is very similar to the first one uh, because the net force is so, is so great compared to mg. The, the, nor the, the normal force is so much larger than what mg is. Okay.